Good evening. I am calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, November 20th. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions by the Massachusetts State Legislature for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the Select Board chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, people wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. There will be a number of opportunities for public comment at tonight's meeting. When those uh, arise, I will mention it. And at that point, if you are participating in the room, you're in the room, you want to participate, of course, raise your hand. Uh, same thing in Zoom. If you're participating in Zoom, you want to participate at the time I announce the public comment, please raise your hand um, when I announce the public comment is open. If you do not know how to raise your hand in Zoom, now would be an excellent time to search for how to do so. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. The first item of business is the introduction of our new Veterans Services Director, Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am pleased and honored to welcome uh, Colonel Philip McGovern to the meeting this evening uh, in hopes of just offering an opportunity for a public introduction. Uh, Phil is going to be our new Veterans Services Director. Uh, and, you know, he was, we were very fortunate that he was able to join us during the Veteran Day ceremony, which I know some of you had the opportunity to meet Phil, but also wanted to provide the public to hear a little bit more about Phil, sort of put a name with the face and uh, know who it is that's going to be serving Arlington's veterans for uh, hopefully years to come. Excellent. Colonel Montgomery, if you'd like to come up to the table and uh, give us some brief introduction. Thank you very much, sir, for, uh, for joining our community. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction, Jim. Um, and uh, thank you to the select board for um, inviting me here tonight to uh, briefly um, speak with you to be introduced to you and uh, the community that you represent as the senior elected leadership of Arlington. Um, you know, I, I figured just give you, uh, you've probably heard some background about me or read it or, but um, in a nutshell, um, you know, f uh, for my career um, since my mid 20s when I graduated from law school uh, has been. Um, more or less a hybrid itself in many ways of uh, civilian and military service with um, some uh, private sector work as well. Um, in the front half of it, um, it was full-time um, civilian service uh, employment and uh, part-time military um, from the time when I enlisted in the Massachusetts National Guard, the Army National Guard, uh, after graduating from Suffolk University Law School. Uh, at that time, I, you know, I was uh, looking toward <clears throat> serving as a prosecutor, and after a couple years, uh, maybe three, three and a half years out of law school, I, I did uh, uh, get hired into the Massachusetts Attorney General's office, um, and you know, <coughs> eventually into the Criminal Bureau uh, after service in uh, district court work. Um, all that time I was progressing up, getting um, serving enlisted uh, for three years in the Guard, uh, commissioned as an officer in 1994. Uh, next year will be my 30th year of commission service, and that's when colonels, unless there are someday going to be generals, are no longer, are going to fade away, as General MacArthur put it. Um, and it's, uh, it, there's been an awful lot of, of great service in, in between in the military. Um, I come to this job after spending um, 20 of the past 32 months on active duty at the Pentagon. Um, I have, in, like my career, it's overall has been hybrid. My career in the military has been, um, you know, quite hybrid and varied. Um, I've served in all three components of uh, the United States Army. 
Uh, there are three components, the active component, um, the National Guard component, and the U.S. Army Reserve component. Um, when I became major during deployment to Iraq uh, in 2007 to 8, um, I was a National Guard officer. When we um, got back, I decided, you know, uh, in that time frame, with the military being in the uh, call to veteran and to, to soldiers to uh, be on active duty uh, quite frequently, that investing full time um, as a strategic plans and policy officer in the in the uh, active component of the U.S. Army was would be best for my service and for my career overall. Um, so I've been 50-50 just about on uh, part time military service and full time military service. The past 15 years, more that uh, act full time. Currently in the U.S. Army Reserve, I came off 20, the, the uh, 20 months at the Pentagon, joint staff. Coming back to Massachusetts, I was back here working for the, the National Guard. Again, I, after being in the active Army, I returned to the National Guard. Uh, re returned, um, I never really left Woburn as uh, being my place of residence uh, while I was at, on active duty. Um, but I came back, bought a house in Woburn. Um, and, you know, after getting back this past, just two months ago, um, you know, decided I would like to get back into municipal service, um, back into um, state service. I, I had actually worked for the city as a, as a young kid um, while I was in college and for the law department of the city of Woburn um, when I was in law school. Uh, worked obviously for the state. And um, coming back, I, I felt like getting reintegrated into a place where I could actually work with individuals um, and help them get the benefits that they deserve, um, as well as working with a full community to uh, help the veterans community energize itself uh, to be mutually supportive. Uh, and uh, a, a community within a community um, as full-fledged integrated members. I've, I think that the Veterans Day celebration um, commemoration last Saturday uh, was a great example of that. Um, I think our Veterans Council is a great demonstration of that um, where um, some members are veterans, others are, um, are civilians or their entire life um, who want to work um, toward the goals of the veterans community and may have um, veteran relatives themselves and friends. Um, so with that, I, I thank you for inviting me here. I, I'll guarantee you it's, uh, I know I have big shoes to fill uh, with the immediate predecessor, um, Jeff Chungalo, uh, with um, his predecessor, Bill McCarthy, both of whom have been extraordinarily uh, supportive um, in, in this, the past couple weeks that I've been here. Um, and, and as has everybody else working for the town. Uh, with that, I thank you, and if you have any questions of me, I'd be more than happy to answer, um, but I don't want to bully your time because I know you have a lot of city, uh, town business to do. We do, but thank you very much for your service to our country, to your community, and we're delighted for, to have you, uh, I wouldn't call it fading away, but fading into a new phase. <laughs> fading into a new phase. Um, yeah. I think in lieu of questions, I would invite my colleagues to make any brief remarks before we move on, um, and I'll start it uh, with uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for choosing Arlington. I was going to tell you you have big shoes to fill, but you covered that, <laughs> that portion of my comments. Um, I mean, I've lived in Arlington a long time, and the veterans events have always been really an important part of, of our town events, and they're the events that I, as a kid growing up in Arlington, and now as an adult, really remember about the town. And it's certainly one, just one minor aspect of the job that you're, you're filling. But um, I, I'm re really excited to have someone who's so passionate about veterans. And again, thank you for your service, both active and, and as a reservist. And um, I think your experience will come in and take our already you know, wonderful events and allow you to kind of put your own touch on it. And you know, it's really important for our veterans and non-veterans to partake in those events. And certainly, I like to bring my two boys down to those events. And uh, it's always a good experience for everyone involved. So thank you for choosing Arlington. And um, 
I, have, I look forward to working with you. Thanks, John. Mrs. Mahat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Colonel McGovern. Uh, we've already caught you quick at the firehouse and over there in the chair. And um, I, as I said to you earlier, I was a little trepidation once uh, we had Bill McCarthy Yorker ask him how he got that nickname. There's no salacious story behind it, but it's a fun story. Um, and uh, Jeff Chunglo, uh, definitely our big boots to fill. Um, nice to see Ami Green, my dad wanted to pass on. Um, but one of the things that I think was so successful with, your, with Bill McCarthy and then with um, Phil, Jeff Chunglo and now with you um, is the many different uh, aspects of a veteran's life and or his or her family. Um, he, not only here in Arlington, but as I mentioned to you, sometimes because Arlington's known um, by its predecessors and now you for uh, being able to help all veterans. Um, I can't tell you how many veterans have been helped out by Bill McCarthy and, and Jeff Chunglo because that's the way they operated. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of very serious issues that, that veterans have to deal with. Um, mental health and suicide, that was something that um, Jeff Chunglo really highlighted um, and something that I and others have, have worked on. <clears throat> as I said to you before, and you certainly are, are very cognizant, very aware of uh, this is a, a strong suit that you definitely do have. Um, to help someone, it's truly just doing the four letters to help someone. Um, and sometimes you're, it'll be unsung hero, you, you'll be in your job. Because especially with veterans, um, regardless of what um, exercise or operation or war that they served in, um, when they come home, as you know, and we discussed, it's very difficult to reach out for help. Um, and the, the way that I've seen it successful, not just for Arlington veterans, but both Bill McCarthy and and Jeff Chunglo have helped other veterans who live in communities that don't have such a strong veteran service officer, um, is truly just to do the help, maintain um, the contact. And unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of good deeds that you do. We'll know in terms of the ceremonial days, things that, that, that you're working on and oversee. But there'll be a lot of things that you do that we probably won't know about. So I want to thank you in advance and wish you nothing but the best of luck. And I'm always available. And you're always available, so you and I will be very friendly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Colonel McGovern. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service to, to our country, a true hero, and we're really honored to have you here with us. Um, you know, you've done tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, and Afghanistan, excuse me, and your Purple Heart recipient. So thank you so much for your service, and I uh, look forward to working with you going forward. It was nice to meet you uh, last week at the uh, Veterans Day ceremony, and, and look forward as we go forward forward um, to working with you on the Veterans Memorial Park and, and getting the names of veterans up uh, in the park and, and getting that renovated. So welcome and uh, best of luck in the position. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, he, he said uh, statements, but I'm usually the guy with the questions. And so I'm going to phrase my question in the form of a statement because of uh, because the town manager said that when he read your CV, he, it was as if it had been created by AI. He was just that impressed by it, you know. Uh, that makes me want to see it, you know. <laughs> and so, and so, but I'll, I'll be happy to talk with you because, you know, uh, I was really impressed with your, um, your talk I mean, at Veterans Day. In fact, I called the latter part of it a lecture because I felt there was a lot of information in there. And I felt that you had a lot more that you wanted to say. And I want to hear what it is because, I mean, I think there's a lot to you. And I like the, the whole hybrid aspect of things. I mean, and so um, I look forward to getting to know you better. I mean, I, I think you will have the potential to do some very creative things um, um, here in town. I mean, I think there are ways that we can integrate veterans into the community more. I mean, yes, they live here. Hey, but, I mean, there are lots of opportunities for them to play more roles uh, in, in the town, to support the town and then have the town support them. And I think you're a person who can who will realize those opportunities. You know, so so thank you very much and welcome aboard. Great, thank you very much. Thank you again. Right. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Thanks for taking the time tonight. Okay, that brings us to item three to review and approve bond issues and related matters um, under the determination of maximum useful life of capital asset purchases to be financed. Uh, Mr. Feeney. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so this is a bit of a procedural matter in advance of the upcoming bond issuance that the town will be doing. So we're going to be selling uh, approximately $18 million in the first half of December. We've already had our bond ratings call. Uh, just at the highest level, we'll be doing uh, $10 million of exempt debt for the AHS project and then uh, $8 million of non-exempt debt for uh, a portion of it for the DPW project and then the remainder being equipment and projects as approved by uh, the annual town meeting this spring. So, of course, the treasurer and finance director will likely bring the results of that sale to you after it occurs, so uh, sometime in December. But the procedural matter I referred to was in accordance with uh, Chapter 44, Section 7 for uh, certain pieces of equipment uh, that a community intends to borrow for. We need to get what's called a useful life certificate for those equipment purchases if we <coughs> intend on borrowing for more than five years. And it has been customary for us when we buy ambulances and some larger pieces of equipment to borrow for upwards of six or seven years because that is generally the life expectancy we get out of that equipment because we do have our own uh, motor equipment repair division and we're able to keep these things on the road. So. Uh, you know, this ask is based on our experience, but also is based on simply uh, dotting our I's and crossing our T's to make sure that everything is in order for our upcoming bond issuance. So uh, we're seeking the board's approval tonight for the items listed in uh, Treasurer Wayman's uh, memo, and that will be uh, sent off to the uh, group that's helping us uh, issue the bonds in the coming weeks. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. I'll turn to the board for any questions, comments, or motions. Mr. Dickens. I'll move approval. Second. No questions. Any discussion? Okay. So on uh, a motion by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, item four, we have four approval, a request for special, a series of special one day beer and wine licenses on the following dates, November 30th, December the 1st, December the 2nd, December the 7th, December the 8th, December the 9th, December 14th, December 15th, December 16th, December 21st, December 22nd, December 23rd, December 28th, December 29th, and December 30th at the Roasted Granola Cafe for a pop-up beer bar. Uh, by the Arlington Brewing Company. And um, Ms. Marr, do we have, uh, I believe we have Mr. Guernsey in, in Zoom? Um, he is in Zoom, but his partner, business oh. partner Tom, is present in person. <laughs> Very good. Uh, well, you could, if you want to uh, come on, come up, sir, and um, you could bring Mr. Guernsey in to, uh, in case he wants to. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. Speak. It yeah. looks like he may be declining the request. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, so, yeah, great, that's fine. So let's um, introduce yourself, and uh, we, many of us are familiar with your business and your product, and I think favorably, uh, but give us an idea of what, uh, what you have in mind and what you're asking the board for tonight. Uh, sure thing, so my name is Tom Allen. I'm co-owner of Arlington Brewing Company, and I'm the brewer, um, and I live here in Arlington, and I guess I should start by saying thank you. Um, the town has been incredible so far. Uh, we had a lot of fun over the summer at the res doing our uh, big beer garden there. Um, and thank you to everybody in the town for being so supportive as well. I mean, the support has been overwhelming. Um, we can barely make enough beer, which is great. Um, so we were thinking about how do we build on the success that we had over the summer. And although it's been difficult for us to find a brick and mortar location here in Arlington, uh, we wanted to continue to be able to sell beer and interact with people in the community and have that face-to-face experience instead of just selling all the beer in cans at liquor stores. Uh, so we had done some work to try to figure out what we could do with respect to events, and we met up with the owners of the Roasted Granola, uh, Emily and Sarah, and they're great. And they were very excited about the idea of hosting a pop-up beer bar. So the idea here is during the evenings, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, um, throughout the month of December and then one day in November as well uh, for us to do a pop-up beer bar well, where we're going to serve uh, Arlington Crafted Beer uh, to the Arlington community, anybody who wants to come, 
And then uh, the people at the Rosa Granola will also be there, and they'll serve food and non-alcoholic beverages and some other treats as well. Um, and so we were um, thinking that would be a great way to kind of continue on the success that we had had this year and really have some holiday spirit and get to get, know our neighbors and friends a little bit better throughout the, uh, through the end of the year and just have a good time. Excellent. Thank you very much. Just a quick question, administrative question for Ms. Marr, just a, a clarification that these are all separate one day licenses, right? So that we're, you know, we're, we're presenting these in one fell swoop, but each of them um, is a separate because that's the only mechanism we have. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, thank you very much and stay put and we'll see if there are questions and comments or motions from the board. Mrs. Mahan. First, I'd like to uh, move approval. Um, second, I'd like to say to Tom and Matt, um, thank you for being here in Arlington. Uh, you, you've been everywhere between the res and town day and uh, individual events. Uh, I think this is a fantastic idea, great location. Um, the owners and managers of the Rosa Granola are um, very well embedded in the community. Um, and very respectful neighbors. Um, so even though we are, and I'm glad you pointed that out, Mr. Chair, God, the only avenue available to us are individual day, one at a time licenses. Um, but uh, I think this, as you say, this is a great way to, instead of just putting cans on the shelves. Although I see a lot of them on Facebook, people looking where to get Sherlock Gale or something and spy or pine IPA, pot, yeah. I, IPA, so it is. We, <laughs> we did drop some cans today and there still might be some available in Mystic Wine, maybe, if people hurry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I wish you nothing but success, and I'm very impressed um, as we've all gone through your application. We're very mindful of um, whether it's a year-long liquor license or an individual one day with consecutive days that the proper precautions are taken, um, and you, you certainly have some really stringent um, rules laid out here uh, in terms of that. So um, I wish you nothing but success, and I'm going to do my best to get up to <laughs> one of those days. I really don't have an excuse not to make one. But <laughs> Well, thank you. I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Uh, yes, I, I will second it, and I'll also say I like your logo. Thank you. Is that the tower? It is. That's oh. how you know that someone is from Arlington when they recognize the logo. Yeah. Uh, 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 very cool. Very cool. Very nicely done, you know. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hurd. Happy to move approval. Um, or not move approval. You're, you're third in it. <laughs> third um, <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I didn't get there, get to the res, but I did go to the beer garden in the, uh, at Town Day. I was a big fan of the Spy PA, oh, but I could, couldn't get anywhere. Then I was at a hockey tournament a couple of weeks ago, and a friend of mine from Arlington pulled out a couple of cans of Spy PA. I was like, how did you get that? He's like, you got to go there at the 5 o'clock on Friday when they drop them <laughs> off. And there's their limited supply. But this, it's great they chose Arlington. I'm really happy to see such success, especially amongst Arlington people. And I think, you know, the sky's the limit from there. So I like that you're, you know, in the, when you're in the infant stages of the company and you can't stock the shelves full of, Spy PA, you have an opportunity to to meet, reach out to the to the community, and I think this will be a really successful event, and I look forward to it. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, Mr. Allen, I'm also happy to support this, and I hope at some point uh, with the success here, you're able to find a place here in Arlington and come before us for a more permanent license and or a permanent license, and and uh, if, if things continue for you and. Uh, um, so best of luck on, on these series of five events, three one-day events, um, and, uh, and going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll echo everything my colleagues have said and just say how impressed I have been. Um, I mean, you're a homegrown <coughs> business, of course, we have a lot of local pride, but you're really doing it right. You know, alcohol service is serious, I think, and every time I've seen you operating, you take the tips training and, and the procedures and policies really seriously, and as my colleague Mrs. Mahan said, that's really important to this board. It, it's, the, it's the way to keep the public as safe as we can, and I know that you're really committed to that. You're also committed to a really high-quality product, um, and your staff has been great. So, you know, can't say enough good things about you. We're happy that we're able to do this. Thank you for our, your uh, understanding of the, of the uh, 
the inflexibility we have with our mechanisms for doing this, but um, also as a, a fan of not only your product, but of the uh, Roasted Granola's venue and the wonderful owners there, I also look forward to ambling down the hill myself and taking advantage of one of these. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins, and enthusiastically thirded by Mr. Hurd, <laughs> on favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed it is unanimous. Thank you and good luck. Thank you very much. That brings us to the consent agenda, uh, consent agenda items five and six. We have recommendations from Officer Corey Rateau from the Traffic and Parking Division of the Police Department regarding River Street, Brooks Avenue, and Chandler Street school zones, and a reappointment uh, of Daniel Riccadelli to the, let me just, I want to say this publicly. For the, ZBA. The to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you. I'll turn to my colleagues for any comments or motions. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Okay, on a motion to approve items five and six on the consent agenda by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Brings us to item seven, public hearings. And this is uh, the Eversource petition from Massachusetts Avenue. We have Ms. Duffy, welcome. Well, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for having me. Um, NSTAR Electric, uh, Eversource Energy, respectfully requests a granted location for the installation of 15 feet of conduit in Mass Ave at Broadway. The purpose of this work is to improve service reliability in the area. Right. Um, I will see if there's any comments from the town manager in this regard. Nope, good, very straightforward. Um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I would like to uh, move approval. Um, and I know we haven't been as successful as we want to in terms of our double poll issue. Um, but I, I do want to thank Ms. Stuffy for um, doing everything you possibly can to try to help coordinate that. Um, I know one of the double polls that Mr. DeCourcy um, highlighted the last time you were here and you took the pictures oh, yeah. and sent them out <laughs> is on Broadway I, I, I don't know if the double pole on Broadway is is uh, adjacent to this work here I just wanted to put a plug in there just in case it was but I know it's it's uh, a coordination and it's not just the it's company Verizon, that so you I represent and I do appreciate um, over the past decade or so even more um, the many times that myself and my former and current colleagues have called upon you, um, and you've really gone above and beyond to try to do your best. So uh, I you. appreciate your responsiveness. I Thank unfortunately you. cannot say that for some others. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Any other uh, comments from the board? Mr. DeGorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I believe you moved approval, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, I'll okay. second the motion. and, and uh, um, yeah, it's nice to see you in the in the chambers again. Uh, Ms. Ms. I know Duffy. it's been a while. Yeah, and um, yeah, I appreciate the work you've done reaching out to, to Verizon, and, and uh, I, I will be back shortly with another update to that. But that's that's a <laughs> more of a Verizon issue, as you said. So uh, that's all, that's all I had. All right, before we go to the public comments, any other comments from the uh, board? All right. So this is a public hearing. If you would like to comment on this proposal and the approval, please raise your hand in the room or in Zoom. Ooh, that rhymes. All right. Seeing no hands. Seeing no hands. Uh, on a motion to approve by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. You as you well. Too. Thank you. Okay, moving to item eight, appointments. So we have two uh, proposed appointments. The Conservation Commission. So we have Eileen Coleman and Sarah Alfaro Franco, and I believe both of them are present in Zoom and are being moved in as Zoom presenters as we speak. So let's start with Ms. Coleman. If you would uh, like to unmute yourself and uh, go on camera. Good evening. Uh, please introduce. For, thank you for being willing to serve. Please introduce yourself and uh, give us a brief uh, statement of what your interest is here. Sure. Um, uh, so I'm Eileen Coleman. I live in the Heights. I was formerly a conservation commissioner some years ago. I stepped down from that. I'm the, currently the assistant conservation administrator. 
uh, and the stormwater uh, coordinator for the town of Burlington. And I have uh, degrees in biology and environmental science, and I've, formed, I've worked as, uh, as an environmental permitter. Um, so I'm interested in stepping back on as an associate conservation commissioner, if you're willing to um, countenance that. Very well. A quick question for um, Attorney Cunningham. Do we need to uh, move in and vote of these separately, or can we do them together? Se I prefer separately, Mr. Chair. You got it. All right, so let's just um, stick w uh, start with the co uh, comments and questions from the board for Ms. Coleman. I'll, I'll move Mr. approval okay. uh, and, and say um, thank you for coming back. We, you know what it's all about, and, and you're going to do it again. So that says a lot you know, about uh, the work itself and about you. So, so you bring a lot of experience, you know, and, and I, mean, I don't know why I'm going to even say I'm confident you'll do a good job because it doesn't explain just how confident I am about how good a job you'll do. So thank you. <laughs> Second. Second, and um, once again, thank you for your repeat <laughs> entrance back to Conservation Commission, although it seems like you haven't really stepped away from it at all. You're just wearing different hats, and um, happy to have you back as an associate member. Um, and I know there's a lot on the Conservation, Conservation Commission platter, artificial turf and mugar and a whole bunch of other issues. And it's nice to have someone with the experience and the anecdotal history. Um, there's really no learning curve um, with this appointment and uh, th that's much needed. And um, thank you so much for volunteering to do this. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Any further comments from the board, questions? Okay, good. Thank you very much for, for returning. Um, and uh, I think we're ready to take a vote. So we have a motion to appoint uh, Ms. Coleman as an associate member of the Conservation Commission made by Mr. Diggins, as seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. And now let's go to Sarah Faro Franco. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, good evening. Um, same routine. You introduce yourself and uh, tell us about your interest in serving. Ah. So good evening, I know most of you. Um, and uh, the name is Sarah Alfaro Franco. I, I live at uh, what you said, Avenue Heights. Um, I am very interested in the work that the, the uh, Conservation Commission does. I've been attending their meetings, uh, but the last seven or eight months, uh, I value the work. I'm interested in uh, wetlands and conservation, and uh, I'm really impressed by the many layers that go into making these decisions and balancing the, the needs of stakeholders while still, um, you know, keeping, um, you know, maintaining the regulations and make sure they are adhered to. So that's my interest and uh, thank you for your consideration. My hands up, waving. I really was going to say, I was going to jump Mr. Diggins, but I didn't do it. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see you raise your hand. Please, sir. So, so I very enthusiastically need, uh, 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 make a motion to approve this. Uh, I'm going to screw the last name, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah Franco. Uh, I'll, I actually did that me when, when I was at eight. I was at ACMI, so, so sadly, perhaps, uh, is uh, more responsible than most be for, for me being here, you know, because, you know, I started work at ACMI on Arlington uh, Public News, you know, uh, with Sarah, you know, and, and so, you know, I know Sarah's going to do a great job because Sarah, you know, has very high standards, you know, uh, 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 she does really great work, you know, and she's a quick learner, uh, really very dedicated, you know, and, and so, so that's why I'm so enthusiastic, I mean, about uh, making the most of need, uh, uh, so uh, that's it, thanks. Thank you. Ms. Mann? I wanted to jump Mr. Diggins, but I didn't dare, so I'll enthusiastically uh, second this motion. And I was very excited, Ms. Alfranco, Ms. Alfaro Franco, but I feel funny just calling you Sarah, but that's just basically how I know you. Um, you're going to be a fantastic addition to the Conservation Commission because uh, you've certainly uh, in working at ACMI and, and covering all the multitude of different kinds of meetings as well as uh, my personal interactions with you, you definitely have a grasp for not only the issue 
but um, the different points of view around the issue. You've always done your homework and my homework sometimes. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, being uh, level-headed and uh, a grasp of uh, being able to listen more than talk, uh, you, you definitely have the, scored the bank on that one um and and i've always appreciated that and i'm not surprised that you've already been attending the meetings and you're probably just as well versed as anybody else um with that um with your experience and background that you have um not just at acmi but in terms of your educational and employment endeavors so um and again um all of our boards and commissions are very um important for the town and i always say we couldn't afford to pay you all um if we had to, uh, but um, especially with the different issues, as I mentioned before to the previous um, appointee, that uh, some have, are longstanding like Mugar and some are just brand new like the uh, artificial turf. Um, and I know we'll be well served by your service on this commission and I look forward to seeing you uh, in action. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any further comments or questions from the board? Okay, on a delightfully enthusiastic <laughs> motion by Mr. Dickens and a heartwarmingly enthusiastic second by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor of appointment, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Unsurprisingly, it is unanimous. Thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Thank you so much, and I appreciate your work, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. It is a really wonderful example of one of the things that makes this town such a great community is that we have so many smart, qualified, hardworking people who are willing to serve. And um, I'm glad to know uh, that they think the enthusiasm is warranted, <laughs> particularly in these cases. Okay, it brings us to open forum. Um, the preamble being, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted on or a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Um, and I will note to people in, in the room and on Zoom as well um, that what I would like to ask folks to do is to look ahead on the agenda, and if you want to make comments to the board on any of the next four agenda items, um, ask you to do that here in open forum just to streamline our process since we don't, none of these require a public hearing. Um, if that's right, Attorney Cunningham, I learned to check, check with the public hearing police here. Yes, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you. So we have the long range plan update by Mr. DeCourcy, the comments on the ALYF combined sewer overflows uh, for approval, two recommendations to the Transportation Advisory Committee, and the intermunicipal agreement for the 250th celebration. So if you want to comment on those, this is your time, and also any other matter that you wish to bring before the board uh, within three minutes. So if you are in Zoom, and I could go on, Ms. Anderson, that's fine. If you're in Zoom and want to be in line for public comment, please raise your hand at this time. We have at the table Ms. Kristen Anderson. Hi, uh, Welcome, you. and, and um, go right ahead. Okay. Um, I live at 12 Upland Road West, and I am here tonight um, uh, to thank you for working on this NIPTES permit comment letter. And I'm going to let um, David Stoff uh, talk about that a little bit more. But I also just really wanted to thank you um, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, um, especially uh, Diane Mahan for being at the uh, CSO meeting on Wednesday night last week, and also um, uh, town council and town manager and Michael Rademacher um, for coming. Uh, it was a, an awesome meeting. There were um, 170 people logged on early uh, in the evening, um, despite the many um, uh, schedule conflicts that people faced uh, last week. There was a lot going on. Um, and there were equal parts uh, residents from Somerville, Cambridge, and Arlington there, um, as well as people from Belmont and Medford. And um, what we have been trying to do at Save the Alewife Brook is not be just an organization uh, representing Arlington, but we're trying to get um, uh, activists in Cambridge and Somerville on board as well. And what we discovered last week was that um, uh, the CSO sewage pollution problem uh, really does not end at the municipal border 
um, and neither uh, does the concern for it. Um, people in Davis Square and people in um, West Cambridge and North Cambridge care deeply about this issue. So um, that was great. And I also wanted to thank um, Mr. Feeney for coming out for a tour of the uh, CSOs um, a couple weeks ago. That was, was it? Oh, I guess it was just a week ago today. Um, and I was really impressed um, by some of the comments that Mr. Feeney made um, specifically about some of the snags in the brook that may be um, leading to flooding. I hadn't considered that, but perhaps that's something that DCR could address. And um, so anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Thank you for your advocacy. Oh, you're welcome. Um, do we have anybody else in the room or in Zoom? Mr. Stoff? Good evening, sir. Just introduce yourself. Well, hello. I'm David Stoff. I live at 88 Fairmont Street. My home abuts the Alewife Brook, and I am downstream from two active CSOs that discharge untreated sewage. And I want to echo what uh, Kristen said about everyone appearing at the long-term planning meeting. I think that's a great change from the past performance of the town of Arlington, and I'm really happy that the uh, town is so engaged in the process. Uh, so now the nice is out of the way. <laughs> I've uh, I sent comments, and I don't know whether the whole board has received them, about the revised uh, permit comment letter that is on your agenda. And there are two particular items in that letter that are really troubling to me. And that's the adoption of the town of Arlington of language that is written by MWRA's lobbyist which is uh, simply a frontal attack on EPA's Clean Water Act authority. And I don't see how that has any political support in the town. I appreciate the, what I, uh, I appreciate the position that people are looking out for uh, the town's interest by reserving appeal rights. But it's a, the, the provision in the permit which is under attack uh, is, uh, you know, giving EPA authority to uh, attack I and I issues in various sanitary sewer towns through the permit, and it's a long-standing practice. Uh, it's 10 years of uh, in, well, the people I've talked to at EPA say they've been doing this for 10 years, and I think what we're seeing is uh, wastewater industry opening up a new front in their attack on the Clean Water Act, and I don't see that that's uh, really a thing for Arlington to be involved in. It's language that's prepared in anticipation of litigation, and what I suggested is that if we want to reserve our rights, we make Arlington-specific comments, which will at least give the agency, EPA, something to work with. You know, some compromise can be drafted. And that's really the outcome of this, because I don't see that the town has the resources to engage in that particular form of litigation. Uh, the other issue in the permit was uh, contingency planning for climate change, which is something that I think has, uh, you know, the town is a climate change leader. And at the Wastewater Advisory Committee meeting, I actually advocated for something like the language that the town has adopted. It's just that it should become Arlington specific. I mean, the problem with requiring that plan, that planning to happen in six months, is it will never get through town meeting. I mean, you have to, uh, you know, you have to realize that town meeting will need time to study the issue, as well as DPW will need time to draft a plan. And if you make it appear that it's being forced through town meeting, uh, you court rejection. So yeah, absolutely, uh, I agree with the the thrust of that comment. But let's couch it in Arlington-specific language about town meeting so that we may get a result that works to our advantage. Uh, that said, I thought they were very strong comments. And they're, you know, each draft I see is so much better than the last. I'm, you know, I'm here because I'm hoping the next one is even better. <laughs> so, Where do you see uh, what Mr. DeCourcy did? No. Right. <laughs> thank you. With that said, thank you Thank you, you very much for your comments, sir. And uh, we'll be revisiting this topic uh, through a publicly noticed agenda item in just a little bit. Uh, any other pe persons um, on Zoom who wish to participate in open forum? Oh. I, uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Mark. Has made a comment that she's here for 
attack, but yes. would you like me to let her know that she can just speak regarding those during the agenda item? Oh, yeah, yeah. In this, yes, thank you. In, in this particular case, uh, because she's she's the tech chair, we would want her to be on that for the item. Yeah, and I should have, I should have no, thought that's of that. Okay. Yeah. She yeah. just wrote a question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Swan. Appreciate Appreciate someone's paying attention around here if it's not the chair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very good. So I think that closes open forum for the evening, and we'll now move on to um, under traffic rules and orders and other business, the update for the long range plan. And I give you uh, the chair of the long range planning committee, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, just to update the board, I said last time that the long range planning committee uh, was meeting. We met last Friday morning. Uh, Mr. Feeney and Mr. McGee presented the updated long-range financial projections based on the results of the override, inserted the commitments that are in place, um, had a discussion about the, the funds for the schools for fiscal 24. There's a, a net of or $400,000 that um, will be allocated to the school department budget. We're not sure of the mechanism yet, and that may be something that comes up when we have our discussion on the town meeting warrant, but uh, that, that was discussed. Um, and we also talked about coming back in February after Mr. Feeney develops his budget recommendations for fiscal 25. But overall, um, and, and the chair, Mr. Helmuth, uh, was here with me um, on, on behalf of the select board. But uh, it, it really was an update based on the results of November 7th, a discussion about what's going to happen over the next few months and when the governor's budget numbers come out, when Mr. Feeney's um, budget recommendations come out, that's when long-range planning will meet again. And I don't know if Mr. Feeney wants to add anything uh, to that. Mr. Feeney? Sure. Thank you. I would just say that, yeah, that the February timeline works well because we start to get information from the governor's budget with indications about uh, what local aid may or may not be or what the percentage increase might be. And that is also, you know, we'll be more than halfway through the fiscal year and we'll have... Uh, a good understanding of where some of our revenue sources for this year are tracking and if that's an indicator of what uh, may be happening for a trend for a future projection. So that, that seems to gel with what has been customary in the past and those are the reasons why. Thank you. Anything else? I, that's all I had. Any uh, questions or comments from the Mrs. Mahan? Um, I want to thank um, Chair of Long Range Planning, Mr. DeCourcy, and our Chair, Mr. Helmuth, um, for uh, participating in these meetings, especially Mr. Helmuth after serving in another musical chair uh, in, right. <laughs> in Western Arlington. Uh, that, uh, definitely appreciate that. Um, the February meeting, I'll definitely keep in touch with the two of you, and if it's something that um, myself and or any other board members want to also attend, I'll um, coordinate that with the chair, but um, I do appreciate getting the information back individually um, from Mr. Corsi and Mr. Helmuth. And I also have had um, brief conversations with our two representatives to long range planning, as well as the town manager. I have not had the opportunity, my fault, to speak with our treasurer or our comptroller. Um, it, since for years, when I first got on the board, I always advocated, is there any way we can get, you know, an audit report even yearly, and now we get them quarterly? Um, not that the numbers and the information is not out there, but in terms of our day job, our family life, um, having the professionals um, who work for us in, in the finance arena able to compile it and, and present it to us, and for myself individually, you know, save me a couple of hours of, of trying to t pull from different categories. So if I uh, could, Mr. Chairman, um, if I could just ask the town manager just to, very briefly, I had a conversation. Is that okay? It, of course. It has to do with long-range Absolutely. Planning, yeah. Numbers reporting. Sure. Um, regarding the general uh, stabilization funds, the override stabilization funds, and the uh, building municipal trust fund uh, in terms of maybe somehow incorporating um, it's fine if there's actual number, budgeted numbers, but I'd like actual numbers. But and I think you had a possible solution. If that's okay, Mr. Of course. Chairman. Yeah, please. Sure. Please. So I think it would be possible to provide uh, those up-to-date current figures in our quarterly budget reports that we provide via the finance team, often through the comptroller. But I will note as well that the 
uh, updated copy of the long range plan that we're publishing will be carrying actual year to date balances for both free cash, the stabilization fund, the override stabilization fund, and the municipal building insurance trust fund so that we understand not just what had been the budgeted figures, but uh, the current account balances with accrued interest based on monthly statements from uh, the banks that hold these funds on behalf of the town. And thank you, Mr. So that just saves me um, an hour or two trying to figure it out on my own. And I, I, I apologize for adding more work onto something that uh, is already there, but um, it's such an easy read for me. I just want to continue with that trend. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. Any further discussion? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. DeCourcy, for your update and for your leadership of the Long Range Planning Committee. I think that there's been a real value in the continuity that we've we've had over the last year leading up to the override and this year and um, you know anything beyond. So thank you. Appreciate your service. Okay, that brings us to item 10, the comments regarding the Alelife CSO. And let's start with Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so I will note that, you know, I would want first to thank Attorney Cunningham for helping uh, as much as he did with helping to prepare the draft. I do know that uh, Mr. DeCourcy also took some time to sort of rework and reorder uh, much of what had been in the draft so that it would be a bit more organized and easier to read. Uh, I think that was sort of the victim of Mike and I kicking a draft back and forth a number of times <laughs> on different occasions. So I know that you folks have essentially two draft versions in front of you that is based on information that Mike and I received from meeting with our director of uh, public works, Mike Rademacher, from having met with the Mr. River Watershed Association, uh, from Mike and I attending uh, the long-term control plan meeting that was uh, referenced by some residents earlier, and just generally uh, researching the issue. What I will say is that uh, we, pro we had some recommended comments from uh, Mr. Stoff referenced earlier, and I will note that he provided some language for uh, in comment number two, is it related to the inflow and infiltration plan? And uh, after review, we believe that those are uh, very good comments and are worthy of incorporation into Arlington's draft. And it would fit well that if, you know, if this plan does become a requirement of the permit, that we lay out the circumstances why the six-month timeline just really doesn't work for municipal governments that need to uh, budget for those study dollars, bring it before uh, the legislative body for appropriation, wait until those funds are available, conduct an RFP to get the consultant, enter into a contract, do the, do the work. So we agree that a time frame uh, closer to 24 months would be more appropriate if this uh, requirement were to be incorporated into the permit, and we believe that we could accurately depict Arlington's circumstances as it relates to that timeline in the draft if the board uh, was in agreement. Right. Any uh, discussion from the board? Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, thank you, Attorney Cunningham, and, and for Mr. Feeney for the work that you did, and Mr. Stoff, who, who was here. There was a draft uh, comments or letters that he had submitted. I know a number of the things have, have made it in here um, already in terms of public notification, which is so important, um, particularly based on what happened on August 8th of this year, where people were wading through surge on, uh, around Air Life Brook because they had no idea about the event that had taken taken place and, and, and a place to a requirement, proposed requirement for communities in the MWRA to report complaints that they receive for the nuisance odors that are that are uh, emanating from the site. So um, I think on, on the draft, sounds like there's a little bit more that you'd like to, to add here and, and, and I think we have until November 28th, we don't have another meeting but if it's, if it's appropriate, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move approval of the letter subject to additional revisions by the um, town manager and, and may, maybe by the chair to sign on behalf of the board too because we won't be meeting again. Mm -hmm. 
I'm happy to second that. You Mr. Know. I'm happy to second that, you know. I do have some questions. So first question is, does this differ from what is on Nova's agenda? Mm -hmm. Ms. Marr? The one that's on your desk was uploaded into Novus this afternoon. So how different is it from what was on Friday? Because I downloaded it on Friday. Mr. Corsi could probably answer that. Yeah, it, 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 the, the letters reordered, and Mr. Fiend's exactly right. There was a couple of sources of the information, and so as it was put together, it was in a couple of different places in the letter here. It, it, um, we deal with each issue um, separately, but I, I, I see the a little tighter organization on the letter as a result of being able to look at both versions and, and reorder things. Okay, so right, right, but yeah. there's nothing there's nothing new in terms of information. There's a specific reference to a DEP variance and the date that it was issued. Okay. Um, that's probably the only specific change that was made there. But everything that you see right. was somewhere in the letter that you would have viewed on Friday. Okay. So I'm trying to understand now this, this, this issue about six months versus 24 months. I mean, so, so, so what is that referring to in here? Mr. Feeney? So I have the exact uh, reference available to me at this moment. Okay. But it specifically pertains to what is called the major events planning provisions uh -huh. in uh, the II plan or inflow yeah. infiltration. So, you know, that would be a bit of a novel requirement, but I think what our Department of Public Works and Engineering team uh, was frustrated by was that being a duplicative requirement. That is something that we've been doing uh, as a community for over 13 years to identify those sources. We design solutions for them and then we fund the fix on a rolling cycle uh, through all of our different sewer rehab programs over the years. So that particular requirement is forward looking in that it requires uh, a plan that is climate resilient, right. if you will, to look at a future of uh, more intense storms. And I think, you know, Arlington being a MVP, MVP 2.0 community, that is something we, you know, agree to in premise and principle. But what was at issue was potentially a separate requirement that we weren't sure exactly what would be required of the town or how we might fund it. We thought, well, geez, we, you know, we're already doing that work. But I think the point being, if it is required, we need to protect ourselves and that if it was required for us to generate that plan in but six months' time, that we wouldn't be able to do that given that we wouldn't have an appropriation to uh, undertake that study work to generate that plan. Right, right, I got you now. I mean, so, so I understand that six months is too tight. You know, do you think we can do it in a year? The reason I ask is that, you know, uh, is, is, the reason I ask is that if, if when, when you are I mean, telling someone that something needs to be done, I mean, sooner rather than later, I mean, another party, I mean, uh, he, and, and then, you know, they're saying, okay, well, we want you to do uh, something sooner rather than later. I, mean, I think that we need to be careful when we extend our timeline out a long time. I mean, so I would say I mean, we extend it out I mean, only as long as necessary. Now, I saw your reaction, Ms. Oh, McCarthy. So, so I, think I, I, think, I think I'm just kind of you know, missing something here that's, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, we'll, so, we'll get to you in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So, so before I go on, I mean, let's, let's, I, I want to get the reason you, for the response. You want to uh, comments from the board? Yeah. So, uh, did you want to? Sorry. Yeah, I, well, I, I, just, just briefly, and just bear in mind here, this, this is a permanent application by the MWRA. They, in addition to the MWRA, there are so-called CSO responsible yeah. co-permittees, co uh, Cambridge and some of yeah. them. Okay. We are then added for the first time. The last permit, we were not added as a co-permittee. -permit, I'm sorry, I'm not pronouncing yeah, that fine. very well. Yeah. Um, just by virtue of being in the MWRA system and yeah. being one of the 16 or so communities that, that uh, send their ways, 
this issue isn't about what Arlington so Arlington doesn't have any CSOs, and that's why Mrs. Yeah. Mahan reacted the way I believe the way yeah, she yeah, yeah. she did. Yeah. So we're we're talking about let's let's eliminate and mitigate CSO events. Yeah. We're not talking about a sanitary sewer community like Arlington that is already doing so many things here. Um, already and doesn't have that issue of CSO outfalls. So that's why there's resistance to, okay, we've got this major problem here. Don't talk to us about dates that we're already addressing through our system and looking forward for climate change. That's why there's resistance. They're two totally different I got, things. I got you. Okay, fine, fine. So if I can continue, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Uh, so, of course. So, because I mean, that was one of the issues, I mean, one of the things I noted too is that you, in the letter it said that I mean, we are now being asked to be co permittees and, and we weren't, and that I mean, that shouldn't be the case. Correct? I mean, uh, right. I mean, and so, so it seems like it's a mistake on their part, I mean, or they are kind of forcing us to do something I mean, new, I mean, but, but what would be the basis for them forcing us to be uh, co permit? Well, permit T, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess that that's a speculative um, uh, question, but uh, Attorney Cunningham? Yeah, I, thank you, Mr. Chair. I could address that, Mr. Diggins. Uh, there is some concern about this novel concept of creating these co permittees for all the MWRA com RA communities and what that might mean. I think it's unclear at this point exactly what it would mean. And I think there's some concern on the part of Arlington and other communities, especially Arlington as a sanitary sewer community is doing quite a bit and doesn't have CSOs. What would it mean in terms of obligations for the town in the future? Yeah. What would it mean in terms of cost for the town in the future? Those questions I think are difficult to answer at this time, but it's certainly not something I think is worth risking. I think the town, uh, on behalf of its select board and town manager, should rightly object to that. Uh, and it's a novel concept legally. I question whether um, the government has the authority to do that regulatory, uh, in a regulatory fashion. I think it's an undecided legal question. All right. All right. Yeah. So, so then another question I have is: so why do we have as a uh, something that um, it's more specifically the town request that the draft permit be revised to address more effectively? And the last point is a local alewife CSO facility. So, what does that mean, Mr. Feeney? So, that uh, Mr. Diggins would mean a local treatment facility. Yeah. So there are other CSOs in other portions that have different receiving waters that do uh, receive some treatment upon discharge. These particular CSOs that impact Arlington are entirely untreated. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure. It just it seemed like we were, we just by the, the, just the rough interpretation of it, it's like we wanted to be more of, of the problem, and I, I knew that wasn't what we wanted to do, so I, I just made, made to be clear, clear on that. Okay, you know, so um, um, I'll stop for now. Yeah. But I may be back, if you, if you allow me, you know. So, all right. Chair is amenable. All right. Thank you for your question. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, just briefly, and then try to take time this morning, but I, there, there are two additional CSO responsible co-permittees the city of Boston and the city of Chelsea. So I mentioned Cambridge and some will, it's actually four of them. Just yeah, to complete that. We Sorry. appreciate your completeness there. Um, Mrs. Martin. Um, thank you. And, um, and I'm very uh, grateful for my colleagues who unfortunately have been brought, you all been brought along on this CSO ride, <laughs> upstream, downstream, all over the stream, along with the town manager and town council. Um, and it's uh, very gratifying for me to hear you all. A lot of what I would have said has already been said, uh, and I can't say that was, or asked, and I can't say that necessarily was the case when I first uh, started on this venture. Um, I, I have had conversations, as we all have, um, also with the town manager and town council on the co-permittee issue, and I know that's something that still has to be sort of flushed through. Um, to see, first of all, if it is legal, like, if they can do that regulatorily wise or not. <laughs> I, I got that. Yeah, I know. I, I heard that one. Yeah. Oh, is that what I said? Oh, yeah. my Lord. Oi, oh, oi, oh, It landed. It landed. Yeah. Sorry, David. Sorry, Kristen. Um, um, and I've had conversations, as my colleagues here on the board have, about other suggestions that have come up um, regarding the co permittee and uh, DCR involvement or maybe no involvement, as well as if um, we get stuck with 
Um, we can't, you know, wiggle our way out of being a co-permittee, um, which the last time the variance was up in like 1998, 1999, that wasn't the case. Um, and it's, premature now, but we've had conversations to say, well, okay, well, if they force us into this uh, particular seat or position, um, is there something that we can do uh, that's to advantage to Arlington in terms of our climate control flood plan? Um, can we explore DCR and or other agencies? Um, this is sort of brand new in terms of the NIPTES permit variance uh, hearing process. So um, I'm, I'm definitely on board with that. Uh, agree with the um, changing the six month language that was in there for two years and uh, Mr. DeCourcy and, and Mr. Diggins have, have really uh, spoken to that and, 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 and brought the points out. Um, Re-echo um, the thanks to the town manager, to town council, uh, to our DPW director for attending a meeting that started at six o'clock, which I think is disgusting, but <laughs> um, did end promptly at eight. Um, did use the same conflict resolution team that we used for uh, artificial turf, and I believe for one other matter beforehand, so. Um, and I did say to the town manager, I, I don't know necessarily that you or Mr. Rademach or Mr. Cunningham learned anything new, um, but I think what, what was more important was among the initial 170 um, participants um, that they see it's you know not just the same old citizen activists. There's that Diane Mahan blah, but um, it's nice to see that um, when the DPW director from Cambridge or assistant director as well as some of them, they see that their counterparts are also um, on the Zoom call. Uh, in, that indicates an awareness and in, in a, a statement on behalf of the town in terms of um, this important issue going forward. I did, I know we have until the 28th. Um, I have been in conversations but haven't had the chance to follow through. Um, I know it's probably a long shot, but uh, the tale of two cities um, with some of all, uh, there's uh, one of the two representatives, Lu Lucia, who I, I'm saying her name wrong, who I think is fantastic, um, who's been at these meetings on behalf of the city of Somerville, unfortunately gets struck out by her other person, in my personal opinion, from the city of Somerville, Mr. Rachel. Um, and at the last, he said it at the second meeting, but he said it at the last meeting, which is the third, even more definitively, that um, this is my interpretation, so I'm following up with town council and town manager on this, that um, basically indicated that the city of Somerville was in violation of the current NIPTES permit, basically because they thought because of the new fancy system that they put in, they didn't have to do what was in the permit, so they didn't bother doing it anymore. Mr. Rachel, I think is his name, R-A-I-C-H-L-E. Um, and that uh, they might have to actually go back and go down out there and uh, check out some of the, uh, they only have one CSO, and to me, they're the worst offender with that one CSO. Um, but again, that's my personal opinion. So I am exploring with the manager and town council, uh, perhaps not, well, either perhaps in this comment letter, um, highlighting that since he said it at a public meeting, or just saving that in the back pocket for as we move forward, because fortunately, unfortunately, the MWRA process, this is the NIPTES permit process, but the MWRA process still has a shelf life all the way up until uh, I think early to mid-2026. So, but um, I, I, we do have more time to add more comments. Um, I agree with if the chair could um, sign on behalf of the board so that um, we can uh, expedite getting that uh, in time to the November 28th. Um, and again, I, I can't thank everybody enough for, um, and Ms. Rowe also has been a very ardent <laughs> advocate. In, in, in the beginning when we started down this road, road we'd, we would go in, Clarissa and I, Ms. Rowe and I, t to represent Arlington, and then we'd see the city of Somerville and the city of Cambridge and the DPW director, assistant director, two or three different attorneys, their environmental planner, uh, our uh, environmental planner, David Morgan, um, and also Wayne Shenard's also been, but back then it was just Clarissa and I. So uh, my heartfelt thanks, along with 
Uh, back then it was East Island Good Neighbor Committee. Now it's Save the, um, the Our Life, Brooke. Uh, that it's it's nice to see uh, town officials in there and I think we'll make some headway we won't get everything we want right away and I recognize that but at least we're, we're I think we're on the path to um, actually move forward for some positive action so thank you thank you mr. Hurd. <clears throat> thank you um, I just I don't want to reiterate the comments that board members have made but I do want to thank everyone that's been involved in this process from board members to the town to the residents. I think all the work that's been done regarding CSOs in the past few years has prepared us for a quick response in a manner that sometimes that, that the applicants might not be used to. And it allows us to put up you know, a good fight and put, put forward our arguments against a pretty significant problem that affects our residents and residents around us. And I would say I, I know a lot more about CSOs than I did a few months ago, yeah. but I'm glad there's a, a lot of people in our community that know a lot more about CSOs than I to really put together a good front here. And I think we have an excellent letter here and with the revisions that were suggested, you know, it seems like after years of talking about CSOs, it, I don't want to say exciting, that's the wrong word, but it's good to actually have an avenue, a specific avenue to voice our concerns. And I think we can make some, some positive change with this, so. <laughs> Some further comments, Mr. Bates? Well, questions? I mean, yeah, just so I can understand, yeah, because, because we end up talking. I mean, partly I just want to understand better, but also I end up talking with people about stuff. I mean, and so it helps to be able to explain things. I mean, so as a permittee, if we were co permittee, we would have more say in the matter. I mean, would we get, I mean, what, what would we get for that? Yeah. Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Chair, I think that's, Unfortunately, Mr. Dickens, I don't think we know. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, the risk is that we get something we don't want, which is potential liability and cost. There could be some positives to it as well. We just don't know. But right. I think the negatives are, the potential negatives are significant. All right. Yeah. yeah. I think. I mean, the town manager. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would just add to be clear the co permittee status, as I understood it, was in relation to our being an MWRA community that sends its waste to the Deer Island treatment facility. So we were listed as a co-permittee as it relates to the discharges from uh, Deer Island, you know, some ways away from Arlington and in conjunction with a whole number of other communities that send their waste uh, to Deer Island. So I think as town council alluded to, it was a novel concept and it wasn't well elucidated exactly what that meant or didn't mean in terms of uh, the co permittee status and what that might hold in the future. All right. Well, in answering that, you answered another question I had. So I'm all set now, Mr. Chair. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good. Any further discussion? Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. DeCourcy and seconded by Mr. Diggins to approve this. A subject to revisions from the town manager with the approval of the chair of the board. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you all for a good discussion. And thanks to everyone for their work, education, advocacy, and labor. And it takes a village to write a memo. That's what I learned. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, item 11 for approval, Transportation Com Advisory Committee recommendations, and we can bring in Ms. Swan from Zoom. Uh, I wanna to bring to the board's attention that we have two memos, uh, the Rawson Road and Broadway improvements, um, and then Jason Street and Hillsdale Street intersection, and just noting that for the second one of these, the recommendation is actually no action be taken. So I'm not sure that that one requires a board um, vote since it's an advisory uh, committee and there, there's no action pending. Uh, but for the first one, there would be if, if the board sees fit to implement the specific recommendation. So good evening, Ms. Swan. Thank you very much for joining us and for your good work. And uh, if you'd like to tell us about the memos. 
Um, good evening, Select Board. I am Laura Swan, the chairman of TAC. Um, I should also add that uh, a longstanding member, Jeff Maxtudis, and our newest member, John Aslanian, might also be attending via Zoom. Um, John Aslanian actually worked on this memo, and he is the newest appointee to TAC, so thank you all. Um, let me just go over the background of Rawson Road and Broadway. If you recall, there was a letter from the school committee about several areas of concern, including River Street and turning that into a school zone, which I believe Officer Rateau spoke about earlier this evening. Another spot was here along Broadway, and TAC looked at Broadway and the intersection of Rawson Road, and it turns into Foster Street south of Broadway. So it's kind of Broadway, Foster, and Rawson. But the, um, the main uh, recommendations have to do with Rawson Road. Um, oh, I thought, sorry. There was a, uh, a recommendation to expand the existing no parking zone on Rawson Road. Um, Basically, to the first driveway, this would lose one parking spot, but it would make it easier to enforce uh, the no parking ban and uh, make it easier for approaching vehicles heading south on Rawson to actually see pedestrians in the crosswalk. Um, this is going to be done in conjunction with APD also uh, enforcing the existing parking regulations at key times, particularly in the morning from 8 to 8.30 as uh, children are approaching the Gibbs School. There was also the recommendation to install a marked crosswalk across Rawson at Broadway, where there's not an existing marked crosswalk, and moving the stop bar closer to that crosswalk. So basically tightening up that intersection and making it very clear to drivers where they should be stopping and where to expect pedestrians to be crossing. Um, there was also the request to gather some traffic accounts at the River, Bates, Warren, and Broadway intersection to check to see if the uh, signal was having cycle failures where cars were going to be stuck at that intersection for a long time and were perhaps trying to cut through the neighborhood and use a an alternative street such as Rawson to avoid that. Um, this would also meet the sort of medium term plans to improve the Broadway corridor, which will happen after utility and trenching work, um, which I think is due in the 2024 construction season. There's also a longer term recommendation to tighten up the geometry of the entrance to Foster Street basically to make the corners a little closer together and shorten up that crosswalk, which would also happen when Broadway is resurfaced at a, let's say the, the medium term, not too long term. And um, yes, to monitor the traffic volumes on Rawson due to changes in, um, Basically, the, the construction-related delays on, on Route 16, which are sending some more vehicles down River Street and Rawson Road than have been previously been going through that neighborhood. Great. Um, let's just let's consider this one, and then we'll move on to the, to the, uh, the second memo. Um, first, I want to check with the town manager, see if you had any um, comments about the tech recommendations, and I think my specific uh, questions would be, um, you know, I think it's, it's pretty evident that the select board wouldn't be voting on long-term recommendations now in terms of scope and budget and planning, but if there are any short-term recommendations that do require a board vote, and if you have any views uh, on those, we welcome that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as to the short-term recommendations listed, uh, I, I have no concerns. And as you noted, the long-term recommendations would be subject to funding and additional capital planning measures, right. uh, as Ms. Swan alluded to. Okay. 
All right, so I will turn to the board for uh, questions, discussions, and potential motions. Yes, sure, Eagle. Did you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Hurd. <laughs> Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'll move approval of the short-term recommendations. Yeah. And I'll second. You know, and I guess my, my question though is is so can we discuss timelines perhaps? I mean, on the short term and the long term. I mean, uh, I mean so so um, because we <coughs> it's. We need to talk about whether or not we want to do the long term, right? You know, and so, so I guess the question is like, when do we have that discussion? You know, uh, because I'm concerned if we just say, okay, well, you know, this is something that needs to be determined later. If we don't determine when we're when later is, I mean, then it's just kind of. So I, I'm going to develop a little tracking system so that we are aware that it's still there. But, but I think at some point we should determine when we're going to. You know, at least initiate our end of the follow-up. Mr. Hurd? Yeah, I mean, I think I would just suggest referring the long-term recommendations to the town manager to review and come back to the board maybe with with the timeline. Anything we come up with would probably be <laughs> relatively arbitrary. So I, I think if we refer the long-term recommendation, say that, you know, we're passing on the long-term recommendations to the town manager for feasibility and and he can come back to us with a timeline and you know with discussions with his staff to make sure that that they're recommended i guess that's what and we'll, we'll follow up you know so because we always the goal is to, to close the loop you know uh, with the whoever brought up the issue first off you know and then uh then with tack you know and ourselves you know so so, because we, because things, we, I, without real intent, things can just get pushed down the stack, you know. I mean, so we always have to have some kind, I think, kind of mechanism forcing it back up because stuff comes up. So that's all, you know. Thank. You. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion uh, on the Ross and Road and Broadway improvements? I think we have a motion by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Diggins to approve the short-term recommendations. All in favor say aye. 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 It is a unanimous vote. All right, and then let's turn to the second memo. Um, Ms. Swan, if you'd like to make some comments about your uh, the, the work that you did and the recommendation. Um, yes, so there was a request for um, a marked crosswalk to or from Jason or Hillsdale over by Menominee Rocks Park. Um, in my predecessor's time, TAC had recommended to put a crosswalk in across Jason Street, right at the entrance to Menominee Rocks Park. Um, and we had TAC members go and observe Jason Street. They found that most of the people were crossing at that crosswalk or north of there. And there was not enough pedestrian traffic to uh, warrant another crosswalk south of the park. Um, there were some other observations that traffic seemed well behaved in the area and that um, traffic was stopping for the pedestrians that were observed crossing an unmarked crosswalks and that uh, very few people were crossing near the island, but that there were enough lulls in the traffic that they seemed like they could find a gap and cross safely. So our recommendation was no change to this current configuration. Thank you very much. I'll turn now to the board for any uh, questions or comments. Okay, uh, I will just add my gratitude. Uh, every time I see a tech uh, memo, I have a high degree of confidence that a lot of good work has gone into it. I appreciate the visuals in the report. It makes it really clear for us as the responsible parties for, for traffic to understand what you're talking about. and. Um, and it's great. So I think it's also to your credit that you're willing to say sometimes, hey, you know, so we don't think anything needs to be done. I think it's just as valid and important as out, uh, uh, an outcome as, as the other thing. So thank you for your work. And, and to, to your colleagues who drafted these excellent memos. 
Okay, thank you very much. It turns us to uh, item 12, the intermunicipal agreement for the 250th celebration. Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So before the board this evening uh, is an intermunicipal agreement with Concord, Lexington, and Lincoln to enter into some Battle Road 2025, or i.e. 250th celebration planning efforts jointly with uh, some of these neighboring municipalities. Uh, the goal would largely be to share services and costs related to marketing, public relations, and events management, given that all municipalities have an interest in uh, the events surrounding this celebration, and we think it would be wise to be advertising the same to uh, the various different audiences, both in our region and outside of our region that may be traveling uh, to the greater Boston area. And frankly, I've, you know, just anecdotally from the initial planning meetings we've had, we've seen the benefit of knowing which community was having which event on which day, right? So you're not necessarily in competition for the same visitors at the same time, and you can uh, plan your schedule of events accordingly, but we're hoping that you know, this effort would help us reach uh, as many people as possible. Obviously, the, the board would be the executing authority here as we're looking to demonstrate commitment from the community's leadership to this important celebration. And ideally, from the management perspective, just looking to work together with these other communities to ensure a safe, successful, and collaborative lineup of uh, events and activities. So I will point out that there is, you know, for lack of a better word, a, a buy-in to this. Uh, this is something that has been discussed at length with our local 250th committee upon which uh, Select Board Member Heard is on. We have identified uh, the sources of funding for Arlington's buy-in and that would be comprised of two uh, $25,000 payments, uh, the first of which the local 250th committee was uh, received a successful vote on a warrant article appropriation for fiscal year 24 at this year's annual town meeting for $25,000. And then I had previously programmed uh, $25,000 in for regional planning efforts pertaining to the 250th celebration into uh, an economic development bond bill uh, that Arlington was the recipient of. So those two sources of funds uh, would serve as our uh, buy-in for this program. And then the, I guess, one final detail that I would point out is that this agreement essentially sets up uh, a core group of eight people, two from each municipality, that would be able to attend uh, daytime meetings and take votes on which consultants are chosen and the individuals uh, on town staff that I would propose uh, appointing as Arlington's representatives would be uh, Katie Lazai, our new economic uh, development coordinator who's been uh, you know joining all of the not only the regional planning efforts but is helping to bring uh, the next multi-community 250th meeting to Arlington Town Hall, uh, as well as uh, Deputy Town Manager Christine Bongiorno, given her ability to corroborate with, uh, you know, not only other communities, but the various different departments in town that would play a role during the events uh, and celebration. Thank you. I wonder if our representative to the semi-quincentennial committee would care to offer any comments or motions. Sure, and good work on that. Thank you, I, I practiced. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I do want to thank Tom Manager and all his work. I know Katie's done a lot of work on this. Um, this it was, was a proposal that was made about a year back, and it helps on, in the celebration. It really solidifies our relationship with a couple of our neighboring towns to work together for, for a a time that's exciting and probably going to be quite chaotic and it helps us pool resources we you know we're competing f with with tourists and visitors from Lex from uh, Lexington and Concord 
and some of the more traditional tourist site towns, for lack of a better way to phrase it. And so I, I think working with them to make sure that there's events that happen during this time that Arlington can highlight and they can kind of push people our way. And then just as the town manager said, you know, we're going to have a lot of consultants to help us put together the right events to attract people into town. And the costs are pretty dramatic in to work, to, you know, to pool resources for consultants, for marketing. Um, it will be very beneficial to the town. Everyone on the 250 committee has been very excited about the prospect of the intermunicipal agreement since it came, since we first heard of it. And <clears throat> so I, I, it's good to see it coming together and um, it will continue the work that we've been doing and we'll do for the next you know year and a half as we look towards you know April of 2025 with a test run in April of 2024 um, and it's exciting I, I think it will be a really really interesting time for the town and a great opportunity for Arlington to highlight its history and its current business offerings and restaurants and and other uh, Arlington Brew and, and, and everything else that the, the town has to offer I think will come to light and it will help us well beyond 2025. So I, again, I want to thank everyone that's put work into this and it's exciting to be moving forward with it and move approval. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Oh, Ms. Mahan, thank you. Mr. Chair, I will definitely second that motion. Um, I, I saw different language in here that it's a four-year contract, but it can be ratified or re-ratified every year, but then I saw two-year. So is this a two-year or a four-year with a continuing once a year, every year of re-ratification? Yeah. Am I in reading this wrong? I'm just uh -huh. confused by reading it. I had the same. I had the same. Uh -huh. Okay. Could you repeat it again? Sure. Um, is, I've, I've read in here this is a four-year, just in terms of what we're signing, this is a four-year agreement, then I saw the two-year, then I saw the every year sort of a perfunctory re-ratification of it, and then I also saw language that said it could also be extended an additional two years beyond the initial um, term. So is this a two-year or a four-year with the possibility of an additional two-year? I would... Mr. Chair, I, yeah, I'm trying to get The term is as it says. There's, I know it is confusing, mm. Ms. Mahan. I think it, it, the term is as it says, September 1, 2023 through June 30, 26, with an option for for further extension. Um, but I think the term, most likely based on the celebration, is going to end at that point. I think the only thing would have an opportunity to opt out at that point and not participate uh, in further um, further agreement with the other communities beyond that date, which is probably the most likely result. But the language is a bit. Clunky. Okay. No, that's fine. And then um, our buy-in, is it just the one buy-in at 50000 And I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to see what the whole parameter of it is. Is this a one-time buy-in of the 50000 or there, there will be another one or two more buy-ins? This is the only buy-in that I'm aware of. And then there would be an agreement with whomever the consultants are that are chosen that if we wanted specific additional, you know, Arlington only services that we would have a mechanism uh, to pay for those separately as Arlington expenses. But the general buy-in remains 50,000 and that's what has been budgeted. And again, I think I just have two more questions. Sure. I'm, I'm definitely in favor of this and hmm. these are just yeah, yeah. housekeeping questions. They're not, they're not yep. any way negative or anything like that. And curiosity, um, is the, other three communities, Lincoln, Concord, Lexington, are they also a $50,000 buy-in, or is it different? Yeah, I think, in fact, that's in the appendix, if you scroll oh, far enough, yeah. Okay. And All then, equal shares, yes. Okay. And then um, I see that, thank you to the town of Concord, it's not a city, right, town of Concord, um, who seems to be doing uh, a little bit more share of the work in terms of overseeing and the funds and things like that. So don't necessarily need an answer tonight, and we're not talking a $10 million, $2 million, um, 
dollar budget. Uh, but I'm assuming that um, in terms of any sort of reporting or auditing that the, the town of Concord will do that since they seem to be the administrator of this and that there will somehow be some reporting vehicle back to the other three member communities. And I just say that in terms of I'm not, I don't want to make any more work for the town of Arlington um, in terms of RFPs, consultants, consultants chosen, but um, just having worked on events as we all have, you know, whether it's a PTO event, a town day event, et cetera, um, and this is definitely a one-time sort of event, um, and there's going to be many, many different consultants on that. Oh, do you know where I'm going? Go ahead. Uh, no, sorry, but Mr. I don't mean to, but I think no. the one issue raised, Ms. Mahan, about the reporting is mm. dealt with in Section 10 of the agreement, and it is Concord who's got the duty to provide financial statements annually. Right, but I, I was just curious, and I don't need an answer to this tonight. Is that going to be done in-house Concord by Concord's Powers and Sullivan um, or Concord's Comptroller or whatever? I'm just curious. Who, I know it's Concord. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I, um, I wouldn't specifically know which entity within Concord is going to... Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious in terms of... It, and if they say well, we're really not in, going to explore that we need that level of auditing, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious if it's um, that sort of a thing. Um, and, 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 and the reason why is just in terms of um, sometimes if one group is in control of a one-time event like this and is overseeing RFP and other things and somehow you fall into the trap that the one person picks the one consultant over and over again that really isn't producing, A, the committee will know that. But B, sometimes when you find out about it, it's a little bit too late. So, but I'll leave that to um, the town manager and Mr. Hurd, um, who will be on the committee for this. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Mr. Hurd? Yeah, and I just wanted to clarify the timeline. Um, the reason says um, June 30th, 2026. We often talk about the April 2025 because that's where. You know, the bulk of the celebration in this area is going to be the beginning of the Revolutionary War. But in all the joint meetings that we've had, we've talked about the possibility of a series of events that could last the whole year into 2026, you know, as so did the war. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the that's the that's the rationale for having it end in 20, in June 2026 versus June 2025 to say all right well the, the event's over we don't need to participate in this anymore there could be more events that happen whether we do it here in Arlington or in you know some some of the surrounding towns that we do over the course of the, that year and i think the option to extend is as attorney Cunningham said i'm not Sure, that Arlington will extend beyond that, depending on, you know, what the financial commitment becomes. But if this becomes a really successful way to generate tourism, at, at that in 2026, it could be that we say, all right, you know, let's keep this thing rolling and and you know, and work with each other to try to get more people in our region. So. Thank you, Mr. and thank you for your work on the, on the committee. Um, I'll just add that I think in addition to the, the streamlining of costs, there's also some potential advantages, um, and I'm very happy to support this, uh, to just the streamlining of coordination and communication and messaging so that, you know, it's very clear, and I like that, I like that the agreement is very specific that it, sells, you know, it spells out Arlington will get a quarter of the, eff of the effort in the consulting hours and get products specific to Arlington. Uh, but I think having one consultant in, uh, with an awareness of what all the other towns are doing really lines us up well for a coordinated and streamlined message that, that will serve the public well, but serve Arlington well. So I think it's all good. Oh, Mr. Uh, Diggins. So, yeah, through you, Mr. Hurt. So how did you come up with the 200K number? I only ask because it seems low, because my initial question is, is 200K be for all three years or is it for every, every year? Uh, so it seems like it's for all three years to me, but. So well, I didn't come up with the number. <laughs> that, that's a, that's uh, a that bargain. That was provided to, to, to us, and okay. that, I think, because, I mean, there's, a, there's more money. I certainly don't want to set anyone's expectations that this 50 grand is the only money that Arlington's going to have to spend for the celebration. Right. This is just 
more the number that the cities and towns, or the city, or the towns rather, came up for as what we could all put in for consultants yeah. and marketing and the like. And if, you know, we're getting, when we share expenses, we're getting more bang for the buck. But, I mean, Arlington will have, you know, public safety is going to be a big, um, big, big expense. And we have, our two, 2025 committee has a number of working groups under it. And there's one that's dealing with budget and... Yeah. And once you know we're dealing with events and public safety and, and all that, so um, I think I think we'll have a clearer understanding of the total cost, you know, within the next six to seven months. But this is just the fifty, the two hundred thousand is just what the cities and towns thought that would would be could be allocated to joint resources for consultants and marketing and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. So so. I hope you get a lot for it, but if not, you know, I think it's worth it's worth investing in, you know. I mean, so just we should, you know, maybe be prepared, and it's all. Uh, so, um, and, and just uh, uh, so, I read through the whole thing. What happens if a town bails out? You know, and, um, bails out in what sense? And in what sense? Like because you, you can you can you can say that you don't want to be. So let's say let's. I don't want to call out a town because I don't have any reason to believe that one town would or not. But have we kind of thought about I mean, what would happen if it became if it became three? Attorney uh, yeah. Cunningham has an opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Diggins, a good question. Uh, the provisions in Section Seven of the agreement would apply at that point. So it would really depend on the scenario, and each individual town would have options under the terms of that particular section. All right. Yeah. It, right. I, I had read that. It, 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 all right. It's fine. I got. I got about what I'm gonna get for now. You know, that's okay. Thanks. You know, it's because it's not a problem at all. I mean, you know, so I'm all for this. You know, and, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, especially I mean, the the psychographic analysis that will be done by the the consultant. You know. <laughs> so. Okay, any further discussion? All right, so we have a motion to approve by Mr. Hurd, second bid by Mr. <laughs> by Mrs. Mahad. Some people call me Mr. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you to all for their good work on this, <coughs> and we look forward to more. That brings us to new business. Uh, you might notice that one new thing about new business is that it's back to being called new business. Uh, the chair, upon reflection, uh, realized that really uh, I think I was over solving for the problem by the previous new title. Uh, my, my concern had always been that the public might think the new business would be a free-for-all where we could improperly and perhaps illegally to bring, bring uh, new matters before the board that had not been publicly noticed 48 hours in advance. And it occurred to me that a simple uh, disclaimer that has been added under new business does the trick. Does anyone, so, and we'll go to our usual cycle for new business, starting okay. with Ms. Marr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Attorney Cunningham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I wanted to mention, uh, related to the setting of the date for annual town meeting beginning in 2024, uh, the first night of that uh, town meeting is scheduled to conflict with the first night of Passover. Um, unfortunately, the town does not have flexibility to change that date pursuant to the town bylaws, uh, which does not provide flexibility the way that the setting of the annual election does. Um, I've spoken to the moderator regarding this issue, and it is the intention of the moderator to seek all procedural avenues to prevent or to preclude from taking up substantive matters on night one of our annual town meeting so that those uh, who observe Passover or have family or friends who do, uh, do not miss substantive votes as part of the, the annual town meeting. Obviously, the moderator is somewhat beholden to the body and what it wants to do, but it's, it's the hope that procedural measures will be able to be taken so that uh, people don't miss substantive matters if they're observing Passover uh, on that Monday. And in addition, the moderator mentioned that he intends to 
evaluate um, with maybe perhaps other town meeting members the possibility of a bylaw amendment so that in the future uh, the select board would have the option to reset a date rather than the fourth Monday in April um, and not be so fixed to uh, that particular date. I did note that this is the first time this has happened since 1967 when Passover has fallen on that fourth Monday in April, uh, but it will occur again in 2035. Uh, and so um, it's something to think about, and, and not just for Passover, but just to give the select board some flexibility to deal with any issue that might come up that might warrant consideration of moving it um, perhaps a week or whatever the, the board might decide. Um, as opposed to the lack of flexibility that the, or discretion that the board has to exercise now. Thank you, sir. Mr. Feeney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could, I'd like to just take a moment to acknowledge some new hires and just welcome some staff to the organization uh, for both the months of October and month to date in November. So we hired uh, and welcome Aliosius Banks uh, to the police department as a dispatcher. Uh, Karen Medine is the head of circulation in the library. Charlotte Brief Pills to Health and Human Services as our new health compliance officer. Uh, recently have hired Michael Olson, again within Health and Human Services, to serve as our new sealer of weights and measures. Uh, Chris Keating in Public Works as a water systems uh, craftsman. Catherine Sullivan also in community safety, police as a dispatcher, and Vanessa Nguyen uh, in the Comptroller's office who will serve as our new junior accountant. So just wanted to welcome those folks to the organization. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just interject that I forgot to read the disclaimer that I was so proud of. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so amazing, well, not, no time like the present. Except in cases of emergency, the board will neither deliberate or act upon topics presented in new business. So you've been warned. All right, Mrs. Mahan, any new business? Hmm, I feel like I should, but I don't. <laughs> right, wow. Mr. Hurd. I know new business. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple of things. Um, last week on Monday, uh, the chair and I attended a tour of the new phase two of Arlington High School. It was very impressive. It's the humanities wing and uh, includes a new library, uh, cafeteria, central spine area and um, also saw the new administration offices. Um, it, it looks like it, everything came out just, just great, and I know from what I'm hearing, the students are really enjoying the experience, as are the teachers. Going forward, phase three is the gym. Phase four will be the turf fields that have already been approved, and we're all excited for those opportunities for students um, going forward. The second thing I just wanted to bring up briefly, another event last week that I attended and also the chair was at this one as well, was a, a night honoring Bob Sprague, uh, who was transitioning for as, as editor of Your Arlington, still on the board, but he was the founder of it. And, and when you look back, what has happened with local journalism um, and, and really the, the loss of a one-town newspaper, right, with the, the advocate not the Arlington Advocate does, doesn't exist anymore on, it, on, it, on its own. Your Arlington has served a vital need over the years in terms of informing the public as to what's going on with events, with local government, and, and Bob Sprague has done such an outstanding job uh, over the years doing that. So I was happy to attend that, to thank him for his service and the vital role that he's played in the town. Thank you. We have seen a lot of each other last, <laughs> week, <laughs> last week or so. What are you two doing next week? That's right. I know. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, now the town manager and I have talked a few times about how we, we want to work on things uh, before we, our hands are forced by something bad happening. We, and so, uh, I appreciate the manager telling us about the, the accident we, uh, at Park and, and Mass Ave. We, uh, and <laughs> interestingly, uh, the day before, we, I had heard on the news we, about you know, there was this young child that had been killed in, in a section in Andover you know, by a truck he, uh, uh, that I think was turning right. He had, the truck had the ability to turn right and the, the child had the, had the, the, the light to, to, uh, to cross. But because of the height, the truck just didn't see the child so the driver wasn't held uh, uh, 
accountable, you know, uh, and the, the parents have really worked to uh, make sure that at least that intersection, well, the child actually, uh, after the, uh, made it such that uh, at that intersection you have walks in every direction as opposed to just walks in, uh, in one direction and then walks in another direction, another phase, you know, and, and, um, and thankfully at that intersection, that's not the case, you know. Uh, so at Park and Mass Ave, I mean, uh, a, you get a walk signal in all directions, you know. And I, I know that's the case in, in other intersections in town. I mean, the other big ones, you know, uh, Park and Pleasant Mystic, I mean, and, and uh, I'm sorry, I mean, Mass Ave and Pleasant Mystic, I mean, and also Mass Ave and Lake Street. Uh, so at least that's not an issue here in, in town, you know. I mean, I'm happy for that, you know, but I do. Uh, once again, I mean, appreciate that we 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 do effort at least I me mean, to try to at least examine problems and potentially come up with solutions to them before they I mean or forced on us. Yeah, so, thank you. And I have no new business, and I believe that is the time to invite a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. DeCourcy and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.